government forces have kept up the momentum of making gains in the north with the taking over of Elephant Pass, the area linking the Jaffna Peninsula to the rest of the country. The year began, however, with the news of the capture of Kirinochi on the 2nd of January, a turning point in the current battle phase. Tarika spoke to Professor Rajiv Vijay Singha of the Secretariat for Coordinating the Peace Process a few days later to find out his perspectives on the significance of this military victory and the prospects for peace. The fall of Kilinochi has been met with mixed reactions. Many see it as a turning point of sorts in the present military effort. How would you describe its significance? Yeah, I haven't really noticed many mixed reactions. Um, in the sense that I'm sure from the LTT point of view, it's a great disappointment. But I think it's uh, something that we've known would happen. It's been slower than expected because the armed forces have been extremely careful and they had to meet unexpected um, blocks in terms of the Great Wall of Kilinochi, which was built unfortunately. But I think it was quite clear that once the government decided that it had to move peace through a democratic pluralistic solution. And once the LTT made it clear it wasn't interested in this, I think the military defeat of the LTT was perhaps inevitable. Uh, because ultimately, they have lived rather sadly, as it seems, on terror. And obviously, the people don't want it. So I think this happened. I think the government was helped also by the Tamils in the Vanni, some of whom provided certain information which allowed for very precise attacks, which is why there was hardly any loss of civilian life. And I think in the process, the government has made it very, very clear that its commitment to the Tamil people is unswerving. Its commitment to eradicate terrorism is equally strong. And what about the people in the Vanni? According to reports and video footage, it seems that Kilinochi town is uh, virtually deserted. Uh, what is the situation of the 100,000 or so population in the Vani in that time? Well, I think there were reports from early on that many of them had been driven away because the LTT has obviously decided that this is perhaps its strongest weapon, people. And uh, whereas earlier, perhaps they could have claimed that they had support from people, their control has been increasingly brutal. I mean, this has been made clear by those who managed to get away you know, in our discussions with those in the ITP shelters in Mana and Vahunia, they made it clear that, you know, it was repression. They had to almost struggle their way through the jungles because the roads southward have been blocked by the LTT who have patrols to stop people. Uh, but I think we have to hope that the LTT will even now realize that you cannot continue to use people as a weapon. And signs are now, people are coming increasingly. And I think that in the end, the people, just as they did in Vakari, will break out of LTT domination and move towards, I hope, a better future. Uh, now, we know that the APRC process is a part of uh, the government's plan for a political settlement. Uh, how will the latest military victory impact on this? Well, I think the APRC has continued with the tremendous commitment of Professor Vissavitana and his colleagues there and they have managed to iron out a lot of problems. Um, I think you're going to have some difficulties still in terms of what I would call the non-participants, um, some of whom have informally been involved, others of whom have studiously stayed away. Um, I think one of the most important factors now will be how will the TNA react? And the poor fellows have been in thrall, I think, to the LTT for a variety of reasons. And you know, when you study the fate of previous Tamil political leaders who were killed by the LTT for being independent, I think you can understand why, you know, poor people like Mr. Zambandan have had to toe the line. But I think even they realize that in the end, the future of the Tamil people lies in a pluralistic approach. So I hope that they will at least now begin to discuss things and work towards political reform. I also hope that uh, now that Mr. Jayasuriya is back in the UNP, you will have a much more open-minded approach. You know, where he represented the UNP at this, the APRC, and was an absolutely positive participant. And perhaps now that he's back, and you have a more enlightened chairman of the UNP as well, Mr. Gamani Jayavikram, who also understands, indeed, was the best practitioner of devolution 
in the whole history of devolution for 20 years, I think you will find a much more forward-looking approach than when the party was dominated by uh, Mr. Vikram Singh. Uh, now, everyone's wish is to see peace in the country and an end to violence. Yet, in Colombo alone, we have had two bomb explosions and the destruction of a TV station. While the bombs can be attributed to the LTTE, the other incident hasn't. People are concerned that this is a sign of more violence in the future. Uh, would you like to comment on this? Well, I think one of the most important things is the restoration of the rule of law. And we have found there have been several allegations about breakdowns in law and order. And I think it's particularly important, and this is something that certainly is vital for the peace process, that we re-establish the rule of law. I think we need to make sure that the police are actually totally concentrated on finding out perpetrators and bringing them to justice. Now, in all fairness to the police, they have had tremendous challenges over the last few years. Their training programs have been cut short because of the need, the work they're doing in counterterrorism and security measures. And I think we owe a debt of gratitude to both the armed forces and the police for having minimized the type of uh, bombings and catastrophes that were more common in the past. I hope these don't happen, but we have to be constantly aware. But in the process, there has been perhaps a lapse in concentration in other areas. This needs to be corrected. I think with the destruction of the LTT and its capacity for violence, we can actually concentrate much more on better training. We've already begun this. The present IGP has been very positive about much more solid training, about sending out instructions to the police to investigate everything. And we've had some results. For instance, there was a spate of abductions in the eastern province. And when the police started looking at them, they actually found two gangs involved after the rest of these were stopped. I think one major problem we've had is that some opposition forces have attributed everything that goes wrong to the government. I mean, as you know, there were even suggestions that General Janaka Pereira's death was somehow with the government and the lunacy of what you might call an utterly selfish oppositional politics compounded by some so-called advocacy organizations that have received unprecedented levels of funding. Uh, I'm not talking about Yaa TV in this case, but as you know, many uh, agencies get a great deal of funds. And some of them, not you, have just used these to attack government and this puts people's backs up. So sometimes police may not look into things because they are being brainwashed into thinking they're done by government. When in fact it's nothing to do with government. These abductions in the eastern province were not government, they were not the so-called paramilitary groups. But there's pressures on people. But I think we need all to work together to A, make sure that investigations take place. B, we need to strengthen the professional capacities of the police. More courses in things like detecting, in interrogation, in investigation. We need to strengthen, perhaps, and I think this is also a policy this government is now putting forward, of strengthening the institutions like the prosecuting capacities of agencies so that we'll be able to deal firmly with any violations of law. Finally, from the perspective of the government and the Peace Secretariat, what developments are we likely to expect uh, in terms of ending the war and achieving peace in this coming year? Well, I'm not a uh, crystal ball gaze. I think one has to take things as they come. But I think what we can see is that if people are committed to principle, and I think there are two principles this government has enunciated with regard to its uh, struggle against the LTT, that is, it is not going to compromise with terror. But at the same time, it's going to be treat the civilians as sacrosanct. I think the record of our forces is remarkable. And every day that passes in the world at large, whatever the theater of war, you have horror stories which are unthinkable in Sri Lanka. I don't think enough credit is paid to them for their achievements. And I think that principle and the simultaneous efforts they're making to in hearts and minds, as with the future minds of Jaffna, as with the work that's being done. I mean, the, the IDP centers in Vauni and Mana, the, what the army has provided in looking after them is much better than the so-called old IDP centers. And I think that commitment to human lives and individuals or whatever community is a principle that if taken further 
And there are many people who are going to be against it, and I think we need to distinguish between true commitment to rights and sort of um, propaganda we get from elsewhere. But if on a matter of principle we go forward, I think all the people of Sri Lanka will support the efforts of the government in this particular. Thanks for your insights, Professor Vichessi. Okay, pleasure. Thank you.